Chapter 1. Plan your database application. The key to learning SQL is having an actual SQL database. Many courses take this for granted. In this course, however, we'll cover the entire process of building an SQL database, including the planning. Therefore, here we'll outline an applied database that you build and analyze throughout the course. The planning phase for an SQL database application includes thinking about use case, data analysis, data sources, and system architecture. As a motivation, you'll learn what big data is and how we can use it to make better decisions. These concepts will all be exemplified in a movie recommendation database application. In this first chapter on the database planning process, you will learn how you can create value from big data, why you need a database system to do this, how to specify a use case for big data, how to design a data analysis, how to find data for the use case, what the components of a database system are, and what steps you take to implement an SQL database application. Throughout the course, you'll put these early ideas into action using SQL by creating your own movie recommendation application, which will utilize the vast amounts of movie rating data available on the internet. Big data are simply data sets that present us with the scalability challenges of large data volumes, rapid processing and a wide variety of data formats. As an example, CERN uses a database system to monitor a particle collision experiment that generates 7.2 terabytes of data per second. This illustrates the big data aspects of volume and velocity. Another example, Adobe operates a search engine that stores more than 10 billion documents with a write rate of 6,000 documents per second. Adobe searchable content includes images, videos, binaries, and PDFs. Adobe uses a database system for filtering, discovery, and making recommendations. This case shows that big data deals not just with volume and speed, but also a variety of data formats. As a third example, the University of Toronto maintains a database to research dark matter. Astronomers analyze data from 48 telescopes and thousands of images captured over 100 hours of night sky gazing. For this purpose, the database language SQL is deployed to create, manipulate and analyze the database. So how can big data create value? We can create value from big data by making better decisions. Decisions can be optimized based on the insights gained from big data analysis. This is depicted in the data value cycle developed by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, as shown in this figure. Supporting decisions with knowledge from data creates value. As illustrated here, value is added from data by making decisions better. This is accomplished by analyzing big data to gain knowledge. This is where SQL comes into play. The database language SQL is a query language that is well suited to filter and aggregate data to extract valuable information. For example, modern weather forecast apps help us decide whether we should take an umbrella with us on a given day. One reason why weather forecasts are so accurate today is big data. Large volumes of records about the temporal course of air pressure, wind direction, temperature and so on from many different weather data sensors. Why do we need database systems? A database system allows us to access, query and analyze data in a structured way. Taking a step back, a database is an organized set of records that are stored and managed for a common purpose. And the record is an information item that describes a related set of facts. A system is a set of components that work together to accomplish a task. Therefore, a database system consists of the database in interaction with the database engine, its storage, a server and its clients. It includes hardware, network and software elements. 
The advantages of deploying a database systems are that it facilitates the processing of big data. Database systems efficiently store and organize large amounts of data. They quickly load, convert and analyze data sets larger than the working memory can handle. They enable the comprehensible and consistent structuring of the database. They allow multi-user data applications and they ensure security, integrity, consistency and availability of the data. Now we know what big data is, how we create value with it and why it requires a database system. Let's put this theory into practice to illustrate databases in action. We take the example of a movie recommendation system. This app creates value by helping users decide which movie to watch, making recommendations based on big data in social media, by analyzing public movie ratings. Since these ratings constitute a large amount of data, a database system can help us structure, load, transform, analyze and store this data. In this chapter, we will plan this example database for movie recommendations in detail by taking the following steps. First, we describe the use case for the database. Then, we'll outline how the data will be analyzed. Then, we have to find the required data. And finally, we define the elements of the database system. A database system is not an end in itself. The database always exists for purpose. As we have seen, data becomes valuable when it supports better decisions. A good use case for a database generates actionable knowledge by analyzing data. How can we support decisions with data? As the adage goes, knowledge is power. Information about causalities improve decision making and lead to better decisions and desired outcomes. When we can see reproducible patterns in past actions, we can use this knowledge to make predictions about the future. When we know which cause produces which effect, we can apply that knowledge to support decisions in the direction of desired change. Let's see how this applies to our task. A movie recommender. Chances are you've watched Netflix before. This video streaming app offers recommendations for users based on movies or series they have already watched. Netflix's movie recommendation service offers you a list of movies that might be interesting for you if you liked a certain movie. Such a recommendation service creates added value for you by helping you decide which movie to watch next and saving you time having to research for yourself. If the recommendation service works well, it will point you to a movie you didn't know about before, but which turns out to be entertaining. In this course, we'll implement such a movie recommendation service step by step as a database application in a database system using SQL. We'll start by describing the use case. Users can log in to a visualization tool and enter a movie name. Based on this selection, the movie recommendation service will visualize a set of movies that are similar or relevant to this target movie. Now we need to find a data-driven way to determine relevance. So define the data analysis. When we know what decision-making we want our database application to support, we consider how to generate the required data analysis results. In our movie recommendation system, we can use a technique called social filtering. What is social filtering? Social filtering is a technique for finding additional content users might like based on what other users who like the same content also liked. We can use ratings from social media to measure who likes what. If a high number of users who like one movie, say Star Trek, also liked another movie, say Star Wars, 
we will incorporate that data to create the same recommendation in our system. Analysis of movie reviews for recommendations. For our movie recommendation example, we can use online movie reviews from the website The Movie Database, TMDB. There, users can rate movies from 1 to 5 stars, with 5 stars being the best rating. Let's say you like the movie Star Trek and you want a recommendation for similar content. We can analyze which users gave Star Trek 5 stars. We'll call this our target group. We assume that this target group has similar taste in movies as you. Now we can sort the set of possible movies to recommend by the total number of 5 star ratings they received from the target group. The movies at the top of the list are the most relevant. This is a social filter for movie recommendations. In this course we will create and analyze a database using SQL to do just that. You will learn the basics of SQL via hands-on project-based approach. Once we know what type of data analysis will give us the results we want, we can next figure out where to get the data we need. So find the data. Data is an abstract substance. People therefore often use analogies to describe aspects of data. A data source is a metaphorical starting point from which data can flow in the desired direction. In our case, the source is TMDB and we want the data to flow toward the movie recommendation service. In practice, there are many data sources and types of data sources for analysis and decision support. Examples of internal sources include company or personal files, emails, spreadsheets, accounting records, photos, and sensor data. Examples of external sources include social media apps, APIs such as TMDB or Twitter API, data repositories such as Kaggle or Zenodo, and open government data and statistics. In our example of using social filtering for movie recommendations, we need two types of data, movies and reviews. For movie data, we are interested in movie titles, but also in other attributes such as identification number, year of release, budget, genre, languages spoken, to give the user useful context for the recommendations. However, the core of our analysis in, is based on movie ratings, which show which users liked which movies. The Movies Database is a social media website where internet users can rate movies. That's a perfect external data source for our project. In fact, TMDB provides an API through which we can download the collected movies and recommendations data using a programming language. For the exercises in this course, we focus on database and SQL, and I have already prepared a large sample data set of movies and reviews for this purpose and made it available for download. We'll work with this data from chapter 3 of this course. We now know for our database application which decisions we support, which data analysis is required and which data we need for this analysis. Now next we need to specify the elements of the database system so that, that we can use to implement the use case. Now we will specify the database system architecture. The group of elements that we need to implement our ideas is usually referred to as a system architecture. Here we'll see the architecture we'll use for our movie recommendation application. The architecture consists of three parts. The local client, the server and the cloud connecting the two. The database client. On the left side we see the local client machine that the creator of the app is working from. This will likely be the developer's workstation or laptop. On the client machine will run MySQL Workbench, a powerful database administration software that is free, open source and runs on multiple platforms. We will use this database software to create the database structure, load the data, program SQL queries for data analysis, and secure and backup the database. 
We'll also run Metabase, a database tool that makes it easy to implement visualizations of the data analysis for simple user interactions. The database server. On the right side is the server computer. For development purposes, this can be the same local computer as the client, the so-called local host. At a later stage, when we want to move an app into production environment, the server can be a remote server with a corresponding IP address. Onto the server, we'll install the database software, MySQL Server. A database management system that will store and organize the database containing the movie and preview data along with the analysis results. A MySQL server can manage several databases, the names of which can be freely chosen. In this example, we name our database RecommendDB for Recommendation Database. Finally, we see a cloud symbol in the center of, figure, of the figure. Cloud is often used in system architecture diagrams to represent the internet or a computer network. The cloud symbolizes something opaque, formless. In the context of network technology, it means that, we were, that where and how an information technology service is provided is intangible to the user. All that matters is that it works. Whether the server is running on the local machine or on a remote machine, Database clients will access the MySQL server over network port 3306, the default port for MySQL protocols. We'll learn more about remote access and security in Chapter 7. So how to realize an SQL database application? Once you have planned your idea for your database application in detail, you can begin the technical development. To create a database application, you'll follow eight steps. First, you plan your database application. We've already checked that. Second, you install the elements of your database systems. Third, you define your database structure. Fourth, you load data into your database. Fifth, you analyze your data. Sixth, you speed up your queries. Seventh, you secure the database. And the final step is you visualize the findings of your analysis. We will look at each of these steps in a separate chapter in this course.